welcome everyone. <clears throat> Happy crafternoon. And today we are going to play a little bit of Miniverse Roulette as advertised. Uh, welcome in. Hey, hey, Lindsay, back at you. Happy crafternoon. And like I said, we're going to play a little craft because I have all of these. Uh, let me do this. I have all of these uh, to to use. Actually, hold on. I feel like I saved a new version. Yeah, there we go. The the pretty version. On uh, I, I messed with it on my phone. So we have the options for today are mint chocolate chip sundae chocolate chip pancakes, orange soda, Caesar salad, avocado toast, blue raspberry snow cones, soft pretzels, holiday gingerbread house, s'mores, crunchy tacos, baked potatoes, chicken soup, banana berry smoothie, alphabet soup, Rocky Road Sunday, mint choco chip Sunday. We started with that one. All right. So those are the possibilities today. I, I will reserve the right. If it lands on alphabet soup, I may pass on that one just because I don't know what I want to spell yet. The possibilities are, are endless. My fandoms are endless. It, it, it's, it's, it's rough to know which one I am going to spell. So let's. Give it a spin and see where we land. Okay. Spin, spin, spin. Mother pus bucket. Okay. Rocky Road Sunday. Wow, wow, wow. Uh. All right. So, um, awesome. Yeah, there we go. So, I will remove that one and we will go back to full stream here and proceed with the Rocky Road Sunday. So, let me just, whoo, that was wavy, wavy while I move that out of the way to get my. Bago Tricks here that has all of my mini-verse balls in it. So, I believe the Rocky Road Sunday is in the bag, though. So I have this bag of all the ones. Uh, I have a, a smaller sack along. Yeah, I see the I see the Rocky Road right here. Oh, the lovely crinkle, crinkle ASMR. All right. There we go. Rocky Road Sunday is first on the agenda. I have a couple more coming to me. I, uh, I traded away my apple pie because it's, it's a little boring looking. And truth be told, it's not my favorite pie. So. I traded that one away, and I'm getting a banana pudding and a blue ras jello. Actually, I have the blue ras jello, but I don't have the mold for it because, yeah, I don't have the mold for it. Um, I have to borrow that from a friend. And then I have, um, what's the other one coming? I can't remember. There was another one. Um, oh, the blue res slushy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we have Rocky Road ice cream. We have the, the tweezers. Let me move this fork out of the way. We have the little table, which we don't necessarily need, but I'm going to set it over there. We have the mini marshmallows. 
the chocolate bars, the chocolate syrup, which I'm actually going to stick over here between my, my leg and the, the chair so that it warms up. It came with a little doily, which I'll put over there, and the waffle bowls. So let me say, uh, Lindsay says, cherry pie or cheese pie, mistakenly labeled a cake, are far superior to apple, in my opinion. My favorite pie is a peach pie. Uh, also, cheesecake. Um, yeah, cheese pie, cheesecake. I, I, I do like a good Junior's New York cheesecake. Oh, so damn good. I, I will have to agree to disagree with you on the cherry. I'm just not a big fan of cherry stuff in general. But fun fact, where I live is... Uh, Back in the, you know, 1800s, before, um, before you know, it was turned into a, a city where people live and, and whatnot, um, cherry orchards. So we're known as Cherry City, and every year, uh, the first week, there's a cherry festival in downtown. So lots of uh, cherry goodness. I have a couple of friends who... That's their favorite. They love cherry. So they, they hit that up every year. Um, peach also in top five. Peach is, peach is my favorite uh, fruity flavor. It's like peach, strawberry, and banana. Oh, there's the spoon. Can't forget the spoon. Okay. So we've got our, our marshmallows, our chocolate bar. And the Rocky Road ice creams. Fun fact. Ooh, they are jammed in there. Fun fact, Rocky Road, the flavor, was developed in Oakland, California. Uh, I believe at... Oh, I can't... I'm, I'm totally blanking on the name right now. Fenton's. Fenton's in, in Oakland is where... Rocky Road was developed. Rocky Road is my uh, favorite flavor of ice cream. Also, a good one that is a exclusive to Baskin Robbins is Baseball Nut. Baseball Nut is a vanilla ice cream with raspberry swirls and almonds. Very good. Um, but Rocky Road, solid. Okay. And also, Rocky Road with little marshmallows is superior to Rocky Road with marshmallow swirl like goo. So fun fact about all these mini verse things. This is a quarter for scale. And uh I decided when my friend was getting into these and she was like, oh there's this and this and this and this. And I said, I only want to make mini verse stuff of things I would actually eat. So that's one of the reasons I traded away the apple pie because I'm not a huge fan. But also, because um, I'd rather have ones that I would eat, and I traded her a, a hot dog one because I don't I don't eat hot dogs, so I traded that to her for the crunchy tacos. So yeah, so here's the chocolate bars. This one didn't come with instructions, so I'm not exactly sure. How they uh, how they expect this to be layered in? So let me see if yep. And here's all the mini marshmallows, which I'm just gonna kind of use the lid of the Rocky River to contain for now. Let me see. I think I have. No, that is from the Easter ones. I just had, and I was cleaning some stuff up. So I probably chucked them into this 
bag that I can see them at the bottom of. Yeah. All right. So, grab my grabby grabber. Let's see if I can get these from the bottom here. Because maybe one of them will be the same series. No. Nuts. This is uh, not the same series. This is a lifestyle series. I was trying to see if I could get a get one that has a picture of the Rocky Road. So let me let me do some Googling while I do that. Move this out of my way. Lindsay agrees. Mini marshmallows are superior. Variations on mint chocolate. I do love a mint chocolate. Pistachio is all right. Favorite ice cream ever was sesame gelato in Florence, Italy. I'm not a huge gelato fan, but that sounds interesting. I would try that. Uh, okay. Mini. Oh, let me move. I've got some snacks here. Minivan, no, Miniverse, Rocky, Miniverse, Rocky Road, Sunday. I just want an image of it. Okay. No, that's going to open up TikTok. So let me just I will I will share this y'all stop screen share present this screen Come on All right So we have the this layout the Miniverse Rocky Road Sunday which so it looks like it's just kind of all piled in there. And then, yeah. All right. I don't know why it reminds them of their ex. I'm sorry. Okay. So here's another cute little picture. This one is, yeah, I think it's from the miniverse. So I like the like spoon not being all the way in it. So you spoon. That's a cute idea. I like that. They only used one chocolate bar, which I think I like better than this look with like two chocolate bars. That's kind of excessive. Let me see. This one used two chocolate bars. This one. Yeah, it just uses the I think this is their official uh mini verse and just uses the one chocolate bar what is this oh that's the spumoni that i made before and that's a strawberry sundae okay all right so we've got let's go back to the uh official one that's that's the look we're kind of going for so it looks like there's Probably three. Oh, there is two chocolate bars in there. Huh. Okay. Let's see what we've uh, got looking in there. I mean, daily dysfunction with the facts. I just like ice cream. Yeah, I mean, fun fact. Fun to me because I'm a nerd. Um, the Titanic had a storage room dedicated just to ice cream. Whole room. It was just ice cream. Uh, they also had two rooms to store potatoes and an electric potato peeler uh, and a padded cell in the uh, infirmary. Fun facts. Things you learn when you're on a, uh, on a rabbit hole on YouTube. Okay. So, we're gonna... I've still got the resin over here warming up between uh, me and the me and the uh, you know chair getting warm. So let's plan this bad boy out. This is also why like the remixes are so popular because they do things like this where they give you you know four scoops of ice cream when you really can really only use three 
and give you three chocolate bars when you can really only use, like, two. And, uh, so you always end up with an extra scoop and an extra chocolate bar kind of situation. So a lot of people remix and make their own variations. I haven't... the. The green beer last week was the closest I've done to that. And that actually didn't use anything from any Miniverse kit. It used a... The, the cup was from a, uh, a... Not a set of cups, but like a lot of, of cups that I got from Timu. That had all different kinds of little glasses and different shapes. Different types of glasses. Um, obviously, because these are all about one-sixth scale and that was closer to one twelfth scale um which excuse my soda popping um you know is obviously a lot smaller so i had that picture of the the quarter next to the the sunday and this sunday is gigantic next to that beer that beer was tiny um so, okay. I think I could use the two chocolates. And I I feel like, hmm. I was like, I feel like they're too, it's too, like, even done this way. But no matter how, unless I, like, made one like that, which just looks like it's a, okay, let me show you sideways. It just looks like it defies logic and gravity, so they kind of have to scoop on top of each other in a weird way. There we go. Kind of have like the three, the triple scoop. Let me try to see if I can hold it and show you guys the kind of triple scoop action where they're just kind of boop, boop, boop. That's better. That looks more natural. I'm going to switch it around a little bit, see if I can... No, maybe that was good. The The waffle bowl is a is not a regular shape, which I appreciate. It kind of is, but it's also not super symmetric. So I like that little bit of more realism there. Okay. So we've got those. We're going to sit these kind of like that. Toss the mini marshmallows. Have our spoon kind of hanging off of it. Yeah, I like that. I like the spoon kind of that kind of situation. And then the marshmallows kind of placed on there. I mean, we can't even use it. Like, there's this is only half the marshmallows in this little mini bag. We're not going to use all these marshmallows. It's ridiculous. Um, so, oh, focus, my friend, focus. Odd. Okay, let's uh, mini, mini marshmallows. Okay. All right. Now we're in focus. Yeah, I I know it went very blurry. I I don't know what was happening there. It appears to be fixed. Okay. Uh, Lindsay says, I understand why they send extra bits, though. If someone drops one and can't find it because it's mini, they, then they just can't make the whole kit. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, totally. That would be super annoying. Um, and I could just use two scoops. Let me see how two scoops looks. I think two scoops looks... too sparse. Yeah, I think this is just like, well, let me, uh, instead of putting one right in the center there, let me, nah, I mean, it's it seems like one fits perfectly in the center. If I kind of cheat it out so they're sort of stacked as if there's something underneath it. It sort of works. 
Let me see if I throw the one more on there. Hmm. Now, nah, oh. Well. Mm, maybe that looks a little more like caution to the wind unsymmetric but still symmetric enough to be aesthetically pleasing hmm and that just uses one chocolate bar Where'd that spoon go? One chocolate bar, spoon like here. Hmm. I, I like the idea of seeing that the spoon is a spoon, but I also like it kind of sitting more in there. Okay. Let's go with this and hope we can place it <laughs> just right again because I want to ensure that everything is resined in. Yeah, I like the one chocolate bar look a little more too. So let's peel that off, toss one. Of these chocolate bars back into the award winning flavors. Flavor with an A. Flavors. Which reminds me if you've ever seen, <laughs> if you've ever seen the movie Can't Hardly Wait, I love the, the Seth Green character who's like trying to spit game. And he's got this backpack with his like his pleasure chest. And he's like, why are you trying to waste my, my flavor? Oh, my God. Anyway, takes me back. All right. We've got our syrup that's pretty. Oh, there we go. Pretty, pretty liquidy. All right. That's going to be nice and flowy. So let's start. Getting a little chocolate syrup on the bottom of that. Kind of. Actually, I think I need a little chocolate syrup on the, the side of it. To kind of get it in there. Somewhat. Yeah, somewhat uh, askewed. So I'm going to. Move the resin over here and get that cured. Yeah, <laughs> it makes me think of Flava Flav doing these mini sets. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a big clock to set next to these. I didn't put my watch on, and also a big Apple Watch next to the minis just doesn't really evoke Flava Flav in the, in the same fashion. Let's let's be honest. Okay. So I believe, yep, that's set. And let's get a little bit on this one, which was, yeah, in, ooh, no, that is too far sideways. Or was it like, were we like that before? I think we were. I think that'll be okay. All right. Let me just get that in there too. We'll get them all, all smooshed in there. No. Yeah. There we go. I think I've already messed it up from what we <laughs> had before. Oh, no. All right. It's all good. Let's get this 
all all uh all cured in here so that we're not uh getting crazy okay i know when i like pour the uh let me there we go it was like tilted a little bit funny um yeah i know when i pour the uh syrup it'll be a little it'll kind of get into those nooks and crannies a little bit more but using it as like a building block paste. Let me, I put that one in. I want to get it a little more. There's a little bit of give on these. Like they're not a super, super hard. Uh-oh, I just lodged something in there. Because I didn't want this on its side. I wanted it more like that. Oh, oh, I see. Okay, it didn't stick to the bottom. But they stuck together. Okay. So I can kind of... Uh-oh. There we go. And then do this more... Like that. Yeah. All right. Let's. Push that in. I think I've ended up with this one scoop. A little gravity defying. But it's okay. Oh, that didn't cure. Interesting. Okay. I think I just need to go crazy with the syrup. Kind of. Got a big, oh, big wad of syrup. I want this to be a little more like, that's really like thick blob of syrup right there. Not that that, you know, like never happens in real life, but it's a little suspect. So might as well throw some marshmallows in there. Get this. Actually, let me just uh, continue to do it this way with the little spoon. So we can kind of drag it. Do I want a little, a little drip over to the side? Yeah, why not? Kind of brings it into the frozen, frozen moments realm. All right. Just kind of drizzling that in a line. Kind of getting that on there. I don't want to cover up too much of the ice cream because then you it just looks like it's chocolate and you wouldn't necessarily see the little flecks that are supposed to be the um that are supposed to be the the almonds in the ice cream. Put that there. Mm 
Mm. I think that's maybe a little more over here. Over what's not, um, what doesn't actually have the flex in it anyway. A little more marshmallows on this side. That one a little pushed in here. Oops. All right, now I want to figure out a couple of marshmallows in there and figure out where to put the spoon. No, I like it over here, I think. There's a good, like, little recess oh no i put my finger into the intentional drip damn okay let's fix that real quick Uh, where are, there we go. I want to get one of my toothpicks to kind of get this. There we go. The, the drip action going. Okay, there's a good drip. I think I want a good drip off this side too. I want it connected because now it just looks like a drip. Like it looks like a mistake drip, not a not an intentional coming off of the ice cream, like connected drip. Come on. Okay, there we go. Now they're connected. Let me uh, cure that before it's gone. And I'll tip it around and show y'all in a second. I'm pretty happy with this. Don't know why I was like spinning it by hand when I literally have it on a small Lazy Susan. Just for this purpose. So I like that it's got like a, a lot of... I actually like that it's got a lot of syrup over here. But it's kind of sparse everywhere else. Because that's how like... If you had like this bit of ice cream kind of teetering there, you wouldn't put a lot of syrup on it. Got the drip over here, the connected drip. So let me, oh, oh, I picked it up and it felt sticky. So let me just keep kind of getting at it. I could probably put some more syrup like in, in the, the center there.
Let me just uh, kind of <laughs> get more in the in the middle. Actually, I want to get a marshmallow or two in there as well. Let me set that down. See if I can get good like dollop of a good dollop of syrup just to like fill that gap. One for for structure, two because it looks suspect. I've got them in there. I've got this whole shenanigan going on. Got the one up here. Just kind of analyzing my uh, marshmallow placement, but I think it's okay. Just want to get a little bit more resin, like, down in there. Maybe I should have poured some in, in the first place. Gotten it down in those nooks and crannies. Because you know that's where the syrup would collect. Okay. Get a little, a little more down in there. Get this. I think that's okay the way it is. Kind of connect that a little bit there's like a weird gap here from where like i cured it once and then cured it again and it like came away from the the waffle bowl so i'm just kind of trying to fill that in a little bit spackle it up so to speak because it looks real weird to have a gap there All right. All right. Just kind of filled that in. I want to make that drip on this side a little more. Well, I guess it's a I guess it's fine. I can say I want to make it a little more drippy, but it's fine. Okay. That got that. Just kind of getting some of it like on the edge because you know it would get there. That's the connected drip. All right, I think I am set here. Let me uh, just wipe that off, wipe off my hand. Uh, and let's go ahead, move that out of the way, and get this. 
disappeared, and I just realized I didn't turn any uh, backing tracks on for us. So let me do that right now. Have a little, a little night driving. Favorite. All right. Little bed of that going on. We have uh, <laughs> Lindsay turning off my Dremel and tuning back into connected drip because you know my my drip has connections. I don't know what to tell you. Um, let me let me get that hearing while we're looking at the comments. Uh, there's there's some dusting of resin molds and and prepping of projects and uh we have all right this is Lindsay's streaming channel poor whittle snowflake uh only my first one up there and already planning on doing things a little different yeah don't go look at my uh my old streams they're uh i mean they're not horrible but they're not uh quite as I don't know. They're not terrible. Okay. Let me just get this back on center and kind of spinning around. Hear the whole thing. And then we can call this one done, my friends, and move on to another one. See, we didn't even use all those, all these marshmallows. We got marshmallows for days. And I feel like this is plenty of marshmallows on here. Like, you wouldn't, I, I can't even think, like, if this were, like, large scale, something I would eat, would I even put more mini marshmallows on there than this? But that many scoops of ice cream, I mean, maybe I might put marshmallows underneath it, but... I might dump some marshmallows in, put the ice cream on, and then put more marshmallows on top. But, you know, you wouldn't see that on this, so it's all good. It works. Let me just make sure this little bit that got on my mat is curing so that I can peel it, peel it off. Yeah, it's... There we go. Nerf. It's one of the benefits of UV resin when you can just cure it and peel it off of something. Easy cleanup. Okay. So I think this one is good to go. Let me get the cap back on. Oh, let me wipe off the uh, the the little rim of this with my alcohol so that it doesn't you know get all over the place got my get the cap back on that and there we go with the rocky road show it to you up close uh, focus focus all right so we've got the chocolate bar. We've got the little intentional glob. The connected drip. So the drip off of the ice cream onto the cone. Waffle cone. All right. I think that one is done, done, done. Okay. So I will put the rest of the mini marshmallows back into the bag. Come on. Don't fall everywhere. Didn't lose one. Okay. So we'll just kind of put that into this. Like, I don't have another waffle cone, but I have two pieces of chocolate, ice cream scoop, and 
most of a bag of marshmallows. So, there's totally some uh, remix potential in that. Okay. Well, I believe it is time for a, a quick stretch, stretch break. And as Lindsay points out, if there's already marshmallows in the ice cream, that many on top is plenty. There is such a thing as too many, no matter how tasty they are. Agreed. That is that is definitely agreed. Um, yes. So, let's go back to the roulette wheel and see what we've got. We've removed the rocky road. So let's, uh, what the heck is that? Uh, all right. Dun -dun, dun -dun, dun -dun, dun -dun, dun -dun. Okay, chocolate chip pancakes. Here's the thing I told my friend I would mold the pancakes, and I'm just now remembering that. But I'm going to make a silicone mold of the pancakes. So I can't do that one. Because. Because. So. I'm going to close that. And just give it another spin. Also, it stayed like in this range, which is annoying. So I want to see it go, like, somewhere else on the wheel. Okay. Mores, it is. We have a winner. I gotta tell you, the s'mores was the, uh, the thing I wanted the most. When I saw the new, what was going to be in the new cafe series was s'mores, 100%. The, the Girl Scout in me said, yes, I need the s'mores. They must happen. So I think these are the, yes, these are the s'mores. And it looks like it's the same chocolate sauce. So... I might just use up what I have in this chocolate syrup before even opening this one. So we've got more chocolate bars. I, I see a trend. I think they're, they look like they're only squares though. So we'll open it up and see if they're actually different. We've got the s'mores marshmallows. Which are, are larger marshmallows. Uh, another one of those. Uh, yes, this is this is truth right here. The wheel is apparently in a chocolate marshmallow mood today. And it might be because I was considering going to see Ghostbusters Frozen Empire when I'm done. I, I don't know if I'm... Yeah, it's the same chocolate syrup. I don't know if I'm going to... Only because it's not a question of if I go see this movie. It's a question of when. And I'm just, I just don't know. I had kind of a full day yesterday. So today just might be a chill at home, go see the movie later this week kind of day. So then we also have our graham, graham crackers. And our tray with little like, oh wow, this is really like a little wax parchment paper. It says sun baked sweets. Let me fix my light. What happened here? All right. There go. Sun baked sweets. It's real. It's real hard even for me to read. I have to like pull it up to my my head and it's not like clearly printed. So I think that's that's gonna be what we what we get basically. Alright, and we have that like lining the tray so this is the little picture of what we should be 
ending up with here. And I, I do want to say, if the graham crackers are square, then those chocolate bars should probably be square, too. And they... Oh, they're not. Wait, do they break? Because this picture, it's definitely a square. Let's give it a shot. Um... They don't really break. So how the shit? Yeah, the the picture has got them in squares. So what the frick? Okay, let's open the s'mores marshmallows, which I think are are like pre-melted. I don't think they're like the mini marshmallows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're... Ooh. How did I chip my nail on something? That's weird. So, yeah. The s'mores marshmallows. Ooh, they're sticky. Oh, they're squishy! They're, they're not like slow-rise squishies, but they are. They are squishy. Cute. Alright. And they're like toasted there's five of them kind of tough to get out of the bag let me grab my tweezers here there we go all right maybe they are the same chocolate bars too if I have to like cut these things up I'm gonna be kind of irritated to like to be honest. Uh, cut instead of ripped, and so it's not opening right. Are those the same chocolates? These were... Oh, they are the same chocolates. Well, she is. Hmm. Oh, crap. Here, I was so proud I didn't lose any mini marshmallows, and now I'm just, like, forgetting that the bag is open, and they're all pouring <laughs> out. There's one rogue mini marshmallow on a on the s'mores tray. Okay. Get all those mini marshmallows back in there. So this, I mean, this all might come in handy if I do like, I don't know, something. Yeah, X-Acto knife is, is probably... A good idea. I'm thinking though, because I was able to like bend it, I wonder if they'll just cut. So, yeah, I'm using my little nail scissors because they are perforated. All right, they just cut. Like it's probably my nail scissors are curved, so that's not the greatest. Probably use like real scissors, but yeah, they just why they come like that though I don't know, because they're clearly pictured in squares, and they're clearly like made to be squares. Let's. Assemble one of these, get a little chocolate bar, and then the top of the s'more. It's got them on top, though. 
it's got like so the order this has is graham cracker little bit of chocolate syrup well, let's just do it okay graham cracker um, I am going to use up this chocolate syrup. Okay. Here's what I'm not, like, certain about. If you... How is the UV light going to get to it to cure? We shall see. Okay. So I've got that layer down. Put the chocolate syrup far out of the way. And then, oh wait, oh well, that's funny. So in this picture, all right, here's a discrepancy. In this picture, you can see that the, from the bottom up, it goes graham cracker, chocolate, s'more, or marshmallow, melted chocolate, graham cracker, right? Okay. But in their little instructions on the back, that order is definitely graham cracker, marshmallow, chocolate, graham cracker. Which is... Makes sense. That's weird. Maybe I'll make one of each way. Okay. Let's... Put our graham cracker, or I mean our marshmallow, there. Yeah, it's not, it's not really what, like I'm still able to like smoosh it around. Because the UV is not getting to it. So it's not curing. I guess they just are like, oh, put it in there so that you, it's, it kind of sticks enough to like make it and then put a lot of extra on it. So it doesn't slide around when you're when you're making it, I guess. I don't know. Okay. I'm gonna take this new one and and put it where I can get it warm. Cause this is going to because it's gonna need to be more like malleable and pourable. So, okay, let's kind of get more um, of this on top. Looking back at the instructions. Yeah, it totally says to do that. And then... Oh, you know what? It's like excessive amounts of chocolate. I see what it is. So it's like... Let me move that. Like, like all the chocolate on the bottom there. Maybe I need my little spatula. We'll see. Let me actually also use my, my tweezers to hold the corner of this because it's seems like oh fuck seems like this one's gonna get messy because it's a lot of like excess drippy melty chocolate
Okay, that's a lot of milk. Good thing I have two of these. That's a lot of melty, drippy chocolate. Then we want the marshmallow. I think maybe this I should cure. So let me protect. I don't want to. I'm putting this everywhere. Let me move this chocolate bar way out of the way. Put like. I'm just putting something over it so that I can cure this. Kind of as is, so that hopefully it like doesn't get super drippy messy. Okay, that seems to have worked. Now I can get more super, oh crap, more super drippy messy up here. To be like the chocolate that's partially melted. Sorry, I just realized I was like, not even on camera. Okay. More melty chocolate. And put that chocolate bar back over here and get. This cured. And get more super melty chocolate. And get the other graham cracker on top. Move this over here. And then for this. Oh! Well, I'm glad it was curing because <laughs> the, the tweezers just heated it. So it's got, you can see, like, some, it, like, the point is to be messy. Like, now it's starting to, it's curing. Oh, that's interesting. Because the marshmallow is squishy, when I squish really hard, like some of the resin is like popped out. <laughs> Interesting. I was super, okay, as I said previously, I was super excited for the s'mores um, because they look adorable, but like in real life, Kind of a nightmare to make, and they don't look as cute. Like, uh, I don't know. Maybe it's because I was like super into these that now I'm just like, ah. Uh, 
you don't meet you don't meet your food heroes. Your, your mini verse food heroes. I mean, I know that s'mores are not meant to be tidy. Again, I was a Girl Scout for 12 years. I know this. Um, but, like, I don't know. I feel like they look cuter in the picture than my real drippy s'more is looking. But I did say I was going to do it both ways because this way has the chocolate on top and the other way let's just kind of put that on the tray here and the other way has the chocolate on the bottom in the picture which I think is probably more accurate because whenever we made s'mores, we put the the graham cracker and the chocolate together, and then put the marshmallow on top. After uh oh, that like no, it didn't. Um, after we roasted the marshmallow, that was the order of operations here. So let me. Grab. Oh, you know what? I was trying to grab my um my knockoff Dremel, but I think I have my box cutter here that would work just as well to cut these. I don't have a good surface for cutting them. Let me do what I did before, where I yeah. I, I mean, they sort of, they, I mean, they do like bend enough. Let's well, try it this way. There we go. That's the way to do it. Bend and then blade through. Okay. Let me just real quickly. I've got like some little drips here from where it's smeared more than my bargain for. I just want to cure those so that I'm not like getting repeatedly sticky. Okay. Get that out of the way. Alright. <clears throat> so back to this. The instructions also have it like dimpled side up, but I feel like it's cuter to have the dimples on the outside and the real thing. So we're just going to do it like that. And I'm trying to get this a little more flowy No bitch God damn it. I'm just like leaving this one. This is what this is what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna set that there. I'm going to grab my tweezers and just hold it so it can just flow down. Uh, daily dysfunction agrees. It makes it more realistic. It does make it more realistic, but it's... I don't know. It also makes it a pain in my ass to, to make. Ah, 
Okay. I'm going to grab unleash. Separate. Thank you. Grab a little cup here. So I can do that. I've got this junk on my hands. I'm actually going to continue to try to get why I like put it down and didn't use the tweezers again. I don't know. I'm, I'm slow some days. Another reason why I'm thinking of not going to the movie today. Alright. Try to get as much of this up as I can onto here. There we go. Okay. Very, very drippy on the edges. Who knew? It's a, it's a coming. Okay. Let's go. Oh. Chocolate. Squish. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Jesus. Oh, here we go. I got it all over my hands now. I need to uh, get that down. Move this. Yikes. Set that aside. Get my hands unsticky. Okay. Where did that? Okay. Here we go. I got this. I got it. Okay. So that got. Need to let this gravitate down a little bit more. Now I know why it came with the little paper. <laughs> A little wax paper that knew that knew what was going to happen here. There's a reason I haven't put that one little mini marshmallow away. I want to use it. Let me... Well, that is gravitating. Hear this. And then I can move it onto the tray. Or not. Whoa. That was not what I had intended, but it's all right. Well, there's a bubble there. I don't like that. Where's my lighter? I just wanna pop that little bubble. 
Okay. That's a big melty, which I, I like better. Oh no. I just realized it was off my tweezers. Okay. We're gonna, we gonna do this. I'm just gonna move that and put these over here. And just kind of turn this while I try to clean off my tweezers. Let me... No. You sit like that. Okay. Let me just... Alcohol to clean off my tweezers. Because the last thing I want to do is resin together my freaking tweezers. I'm not sure it would actually work. But, you know, let's not take chances. Okay. Those tweezers aside. Yeah. It, it wouldn't be a stream without a little blooper. Agreed. Um, you know, because WAP, we are professionals. Not really. Okay. So, this seems, ha. Ah, yes, to be all stuck together, and it's got uh, a realistic amount of, <laughs> of, of drip off of it. So let me just tear the bottom of that, because it got a little didn't, you know, didn't stick right. Mm. Oy. Okay. Alrighty. We're getting the bottom. We're getting... Let me move the extra pieces off and put this in the center so I can properly like spin it. But yeah, this got nothing on the back but a real good uh, drip. You can see going down the front just a, a big zoop. So... Keep turning this for a little bit because it's still a little sticky. Lindsay says, A realistic amount of drip sounds like a sick burn to someone in Gen Alpha. <laughs> <laughs> I see it. I, I, I see it. Oh my gosh. A realistic amount of drip. I'm here for it. Okay. So we're going to add that. I guess I'm going to decide that this is the viewing direction. Did I seriously just drop one on the floor? No, I didn't. Okay. I'm like, it's not the end of the world if I drop one on the floor, but it will collect a uh, hug hair. So I'd really rather not do that. Okay, that's the front. That's the front. So that's what we've got so far. Shake that a little so you can see. We've got one that's just a melty boy gooey mess. And another that's a little more dainty. Alright. So let me I think I cured most of this, but I did. I cured all of it. Okay. Like, it's not wiping with this. Scraped off. 
as much as I can. You know, it's interesting. I have, so I went to, I've, I've, I've been to some fancy restaurants in my life. Okay. Not a lot, not a lot, but some. And I went to this fancy restaurant and where, where it was not like a big group. Cause most of the fancy restaurants I've been, have been like work things, you know, um, where they're definitely the ones paying for it. And I'm not usually like paying that close attention. It's a big table, whatever. But I went to this one fancier restaurant that I didn't really know was a fancy restaurant with my husband once. And so it was just the two of us and we could see. And they were using... Of course, then I dropped it. Um... Oh, come on. It's magnetic. Why isn't it picking up? There we go. They were using one of these. To scrape the table. A little bit of action for the crumbs from our, uh, our our stuff, right? So I was like, that's genius. Like, I got crumbs in front of me all the time. I need one of those. So I went on Amazon. Sure enough, you can get them. They're not... It's just like a, you know, table scraper, or restaurant server table scraper, restaurant table scraper, something like that. And so they're not hard to find. I found them but they don't what's frustrating to me is now that I have this like silicone mat on my table they don't scrape stuff as much like unless it's stuck to the table a plastic card in this case an old gift card that I'm not you know that I used I'm not using anymore works way better I'm like what the hell that's rude okay so we've got Two s'mores done, and I know it's blurry. Okay, there we go. Got two s'mores down. I guess I could make two more. So here's the thing: if I made two more, I still have. Well, here's the dumb thing: I could really only make one more. Because I only have one more chocolate. This is the first time where it's like not mathing right. Then again, um, I had said earlier that I gave the, the hot dog one away to a friend of mine because I don't. I only want to make ones that I actually have food that I actually eat and I don't eat hot dogs. So I gave it to her and she was saying, that um, apparently it is accurate to real life in that there are um, one number of hot dogs and a different number of buns. And they don't match up. So, <laughs> that's funny. So, luckily, we have extras. I'm putting the little mini marshmallows gently over there. We've got an extra chocolate so that I can make that. Do I want to? Now I'm like looking at... Th this has three on the tray. That's funny. This has three and then an extra chocolate bar. But I wouldn't even have an extra chocolate bar. That's weird. I mean, there are obviously going to be sometimes some manufacturing uh, hiccups. Like I know um, I have... With my soft pretzel, I have the little cup that the mustard goes in. But apparently, according to my friend who's like entrenched in the lore of this in Facebook groups, a lot of people get them and they don't have they don't have the um the cup. I'm trying to see if I just knocked out my speaker. No, okay. My mic, rather. I dropped my sound thing because I always do. It's like once per stream, I'll move too far and my head, my in ear monitors will pull and the whole damn thing will fall onto the floor. But it's still connected, so it's fine. All right. So, let me put that aside. So I have 
I don't think I'm going to use the extra chocolate. I think I am just going to make three and put both extras because I could make four. But there might also be some cool remix to make later with the extra graham cracker and stuff. So I'm going to do that. And now these mini marshmallows are not going to fit back in here because the big chunky marshmallows are in here. So do I still have that sealer? I will put these aside gently in the little thing where they're not going to fall over because I think in my diamond painting bag, which is here in my, my general vicinity of my chair somewhere, <coughs> excuse me, I think I have one of those little like heated bag sealers that I could seal that back up. Okay. So let's, let's do this. We've learned how to get the, the break looking okay. It still looks kind of crappy, to be honest, because the sides are super white. But whatever. It's, it's not like the end of the world. I guess maybe that does look more. I don't know. I have, I have real graham crackers in the other uh, room, but I'm not going to go grab them just for this. All right, uh, welcome to chat, Castrol. Sorry, I'm late, had to get groceries. Hey, uh, nobody said anything in chat about it, but you probably heard my brother get groceries delivered earlier, so it's all good. Um, hope I didn't miss too much fun. You did miss um, a realistic amount of drip, which was um, as Lindsay decided a sick burn to someone in Gen Alpha. Uh, but to recap, I will finish this bane of my existence in trying to keep my hands clean s'more. Um, and then, but the benefit of these is that we have not used the other thing of resin at all. So, it's still uh, sitting over here. Ah, drip. Yes. Okay. So... We're still just using up the chocolate syrup from the Rocky Road Sunday. And to, to finish up these s'mores. So, okay. I'm debating if I should. Yeah, I'm going to make the last one on this paper. Because maybe then it'll lift correctly and whatnot. Okay. There's a little piece. Okay. So we have bottom. Ah. It, it is that today is the anniversary of the Breakfast Club. Um, I, I don't know if it came out in theaters on March 24th, 1984, um, but the title card says like March 24th, 1984. Um, so I, I'm not totally sure if it was actually released on March 24th, 1984. That'd be a real good amount of forethought if they actually knew the release date in time to, to make that edit in the movie. You know what I mean? Like to make the title card say the date it came out. Because I feel like movies get done so like so much farther in advance than when they're actually released, and that you know there are things that happen that may affect the release date that you don't necessarily know when the the movie's being made. So yeah, Kestrel's on it. She's gonna go look it up because now we now we have to know. Uh, I love all the. Speaking of 1984, um, I I love all the memes that I've been seeing about. It's 1984. I go to the movies. I see Ghostbusters and Dune. It's 2021. I go to the movies and see Ghostbusters and Dune. It's 2024. I go to the movies and see Ghostbusters and Dune. <laughs> ah, damn. 
It was, in fact, released on February 15th, 1985. Uh, true, true story. That is nine days after my fourth birthday. Uh, yeah. I like that movie. I've never... I used to consider Ferris Bueller's Day Off my favorite movie. And it is still my second favorite movie. But I realized as I got older that the rewatchability of Ghostbusters, for me, is higher than the rewatchability of Ferris Bueller. And it might just be because as I got older, I realized kind of some of the shitty behavior in Ferris Bueller, to be honest. Um... Also, like, I don't know. So I think as I got older, Ferris Bueller got a little more, all right, this is silly. Whereas Ghostbusters isn't trying to be rooted in reality. It's just flat out silly. So I don't know. The rewatchability, the fandom, it's higher. But they were neck and neck for a very long time. Anyway, all right. So now we've got a ring of, ow. Did I just knock over? Oh, my light. Like, something just fell onto my foot and it freaking hurt. Oh. Me. My. Grabby has a hook on it. And my light has a tether. So. Okay. Let's see. Kestrel says, I think my favorite is still Office Space. I outgrew Bill and Ted's, but Wayne's World is still funny. Um, I love Office Space. That is... Oh, uh, I would say... I was going to say top five, but it might be top ten. If I go through, like, all time. It's definitely top ten. Um, story time confession. I've never seen... Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, or Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, or Bill and Ted Face the Music. I, uh, it just was not on my my radar. I have seen Wayne's World 1 and Wayne's World 2. They're pretty good. Um, not my favorite movies, but also not, not bad. I would say... So of the, the movies that I can like look around and see like fan stuff for, so they're obviously, you know, my my favorites. You've got Jurassic Park is one of my favorites, Ghostbusters top favorite. Um, the Little Mermaid, the original, the eighty nine, um, 89 cartoon because you know I was 8 years old and it was my jam um Jaws and here's the thing here's the thing that's so funny to me if you ask like I would say 7 out of 10 people uh is Jaws or is Jurassic Park a horror movie Uh, they might say yes. And I don't generally watch horror movies. So there's just something about those movies that they're just so well done. And the even the effects. Bruce the Shark is problematic as hell. But, like, it still works just enough to fuck you up. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It's It's good stuff. Uh, Lindsay says many of my most rewatched are the 90s teen rom-com adaptations of Shakespeare, Clueless, 10 Things I Hate About You and the 96 Romeo and Juliet I fucking love the 96 Romeo and Juliet, the one that like actually used the words and didn't like, it wasn't it was an adaptation but not it was, and Baz Luhrmann is so fucking crazy, like the director of that movie it's so good, I love that I love that movie um, I like Clueless for what Clueless is. Um, I never saw 10 Things I Hate About You, 
because I was in Taming of the Shrew, and I've seen other and and, and our high school did Kiss Me Kate, uh, which is a musical adaptation. And I, it's just not my favorite, so I never bothered with ten things I hate about you. Um, but yeah. All right, let's get the little chocolate smushed. That's a nice realistic smush. Let me try this one. Like I'm gonna do this in sections. Let's see. Uh, love office space. Um, I don't. Hmm. I was gonna say I love Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I love Haunted Mansion things. I. I don't know if I would put... So I've seen both the Haunted Mansion movies at this point. Um, I definitely liked the newer one that came out last year more than the Eddie Murphy one, which I didn't actually see until last year. Um, it just it didn't get good reviews, and so I never bothered. And my friend was like, you know, it's actually not that bad. Like, you should, you should watch it. Uh, and we did, like, one day, you know, a, a marathon. Like, we watched... One week we watched the, the new one. I watched it with them on Disney Plus, even though I'd seen it in the theater. And then we watched the the old Eddie Murphy one. And it's not terrible, but it is really off script for what like the lore of the ride is. Um, so I, you know, I like the newer one much better than I like the older one. But. Um, I don't know if I would put that movie in like my top, you know, in any kind of list of my top movies. Like I, there's a couple movies that are like top twenty that are real random. Um, Police Academy. I fucking love Police Academy. It's so like, and I've watched it recently, and a lot of like the humor is real cancelable <laughs> in in a 2024 uh, lens. Real cancel worthy. Um, a lot of it is just like this is this is borderline rapey. What are you doing? Like <laughs> um, but if you look at it through the lens of the era in which it came out, it's it's funny. Um, uh, I really like, so there's like th three political movies and they're not political movies. They're all comedies. Um, oh, one of them's not a comedy, but it has its elements. So three like kind of political movies I love, semi-political, are Dave that came out in 94 with Kevin Klein and Sigourney Weaver. And if you haven't seen Dave, basically the plot is the, the summation is that the president has a stroke and is incapacitated. And his power hungry aides are like, what are we can't, we can't tell anybody this. And they find that there's this guy who lives, I don't know, not terribly far from Washington, D.C., who is a dead ringer for the president. Obviously, both of them are played by Kevin Klein. But he's this goofy, like, he owns a job agency, or maybe not owns, but works at a job agency. And, and they hire him to stand in for the president so that the public doesn't know that anything is wrong. And they don't even tell the wife, which is played by Sporting Weaver. It's, it's, and he's like this super nice, genuine, good person. And the president is a piece of shit in human being, like basically. And it's, it's a really funny movie and it's sweet. And, and I love Dave. Um, the other political esque movie that is a comedy. I don't remember what year it came out. I don't remember if it was a late nineties or early two thousands, but it's a movie called my fellow Americans. And it has James Garner and Jack lemon. 
and they are both ex-presidents. I think they might be from opposite parties. Or the no, yes, they are definitely from opposite parties. Um and it's got it also has Dan Aykroyd as uh the current president and uh, Bradley Whitaker from the West Wing as uh, one of the aides and I think who else is oh Lauren Bacall plays uh, the wife of Jack Lemmon's ex-president and they like there's some shady shit going on and they end up like having a uh, team up it's so fucking funny it's great and it's not like it's it's political in kind of the satire of the oh this one is an old man who you know takes all like has no shame and no chill and he's you know taking every dime not nailed down and the, the democrat is a little younger but still like a philanderer and I don't know. It's real funny. I like that movie a lot. Um, And then I squished that and then added some and didn't hear it. So let me just go a whole hog. I'm just like going off on my love for these movies. Bradley Whitford. Whitford. Did I say Whitaker? I said Whitaker. I didn't mean it. Bradley Whitford. Favorite. Josh on the West Wing is perfection. So good. Um, see, checking back in. When I was a little dirty dancing, some of my favorite movies watching now, there's some super dark and questionable elements. I've I've only seen parts of Dirty Dancing. I've never seen the whole thing. Um, yeah, it was never really my jam. Uh, Airplane, I didn't see until like five or ten years ago. Airplane is funny, but it is, I don't know, because I don't have that like childhood and that's I think why the police academy movies are funny to me because I was shown them like I don't know not contemporary to when they came out because like I know the earliest one came out in like 83 or 84 and I was clearly like three years old in 84 like I didn't see Ghostbusters when it came out in 84 obviously because I was three years old um but I think it's because I did see them like as a kid. Uh, that is why I have affinity for those. And having not seen Airplane until recently, or generally recently, it's it's funny, and there are some really good gags. And I now I get more references that people reference it. But it's like okay, it was fine. Like I don't necessarily need to see it again. Freaking Caddyshack, love Caddyshack. Caddyshack two is okay it has its moments but Caddyshack the first one is is fantastic um and the third yeah him and Donna are like ships in the night um I will say though I have tried twice when I when the when the West Wing was on contemporaneously, like airing on NBC or whatever, I stopped watching right around when Bartlett uh, was coming to the end of his second term, and they started introducing like Alan Alda as as one of the candidates, Jimmy Smith as one of the other candidates, and I just kind of lost. I don't remember if I lost interest or if. Something happened like I was in school or, or what. Like, I, I don't remember why contemporaneously I stopped watching. But I, I did for whatever reason. All of this movie talk also is just because this resin is taking friggin' ever to gloop out. Um, but anyway, I didn't watch it contemporaneously. And I've gone back twice now to rewatch the series from the beginning. And the most recently in 2020 and I can't get past that like I stopped watching again that's just where the show kind of I think it's just a natural progression of when the show kind of lost my interest so I I've never seen 
I want to say that's probably like the sixth and seventh season or something. I have the whole series on DVD. Um, if I, you know, if it ever like gets taken off of Netflix and I don't see it again or whatever, but um, I just, I just, I love Mash, and it's a, it's definitely a comfort watch for me. Is Mash, and I can't. I just hate seeing Alan Alda as an asshole. <laughs> I just can't do it. So his character was not a nice person. And I don't know. It just gets to that point where it's like, yeah, I, I'm not excited to like pick up where I left off. Keep watching, I guess. I get bored at that point and want to watch other shows. So I've never gotten past that era of the West Wing in any of my rewatch <laughs> Kestrel says she grew up with MASH her youngest cat is named Hawkeye that's great I didn't grow up with MASH I, I I'd i seen it when I was a kid obviously because like it's it's on and I'm sure my parents watched it um, and it was one of those shows that was on in reruns a lot like I feel like when I was a kid shows from the the shows that were like not on when I that were on all the time but were not like shows that were made then like contemporarily were like I saw a lot of Brady Bunch because that was always in reruns a lot of um, uh, Gilligan's Island was in reruns I Dream of Jeannie like a lot of like the TV land kind of shows were in reruns that I saw a lot of, and I like those shows. Um, Bewitched was probably one. I I used to love the show Green Acres. Uh, that was good when I was a kid. That was definitely a TV land viewing. Green Acres was good. Mr. Ed was all right. Um, but yeah, those were kind of some of those shows that I watched a lot of that were not like, they were shows for me when I was a kid only because of like the rerun factor but they weren't like really shows that were made for 80s children so just interesting or 80s born children I should say um okay I found the secret to making these that makes them look really good on my third one <laughs> My third and last. Oh, well. Um, so, the third movie that I that I really like that's a political movie that's not a comedy um, but has comedic elements in it is um, The American President. And if you liked What West Wing, you would like The American President because they're both written by Aaron Sorkin. Um, and uh... Martin Sheen is in both of them. So good. It's so good. And the general premise of that movie is that <clears throat> there's this president and he is a widower. His wife had passed um, from cancer. Like, not... I think it was before he was elected. Yeah, yeah. It was way before he was elected. And he's got, like, a teenage daughter. Um, like, early teen, like, 13, 14, teenage daughter. And he meets this um, political what's the word I'm looking for? Not pundit. Um, like lobbyist. This, this, this lobbyist is hired by like the EPA or something to get like a um to, to get in there and get this new like clean air bill passed or something and he's like up for re-election like he's it's an election year and he falls for her and they start dating and it's kind of just about like the trying to date while also be the president it's it's interesting and it's cute and it's it's more serious than like Dave is um or my, definitely my fellow Americans but it has its, I mean, 
one of his aides is Michael J. Fox. You can't put Michael J. Fox in a movie and not have some great one-liners. It's it's really good, and um, yeah, the supporting like his aides, um, and and uh, Martin Sheen plays like his chief of staff. So it's it's real good. I love those kind of movies. All right. So that's my, my three political movies that aren't really political movies that I freaking love. Um, to to reference MASH again, we were talking the other day um, in... I think it was in Emily D. Baker's Members Only live stream. It, something about, like, Comfort Watch shows came up the the topic was comfort watch shows and i had said this in that chat but mash was a comfort watch for me and and the era of my 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 peak comfort watch era uh was like 2014 to like 2017 and that's because that was um when i worked for a i was working at home we had cable television and I was working from my personal laptop for, for I was a, co- a 1099 contractor for this company for a long time. And then I tried to do my, um, my own agency for about a year. So it was like 2014 to 2017 when I went back to working physically in an office for somebody. Um, so I was working from home. And I was working from my laptop, which meant I wasn't, like, sitting at my desk. I was working from where I'm at right now, my chair in front of the TV. And so I would always, like, every... Between, like, WeTV, ION, and there was another channel, A&E, I think. Depending on what day it was, you would either... my, My husband would either come home and I would be watching MASH. Or, no, no, no. Mash was Saturdays. Weekdays. If it was a Thursday or Friday, I was watching Law and & Order. Um, and I am, I have not watched any of the new, like the restarted Law & Order. Original Law & Order. Um, but I've seen, I'm pretty sure I've seen every episode of the original run of Law & Order. Um, and so those days I was watching Law & Order. Some days I was watching Blue Bloods, I think. No, I wasn't watching Blue Bloods on on TV because I hadn't watched it temporarily. I was watching that on like Netflix or something. Um, but on Saturdays, for a long time on either Wii TV or Ion, they would play MASH all day. And then when they stopped playing MASH all day, they were playing Hogan's Heroes all day. And talk about a problematic show, Hogan's Heroes, but it's fucking funny. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, think what you want about Bob Crane and his weird, like, personal shit and the whole idea of, like, a not the concentration or not concentration a, a Nazi POW camp and how how do you make that show funny it, it was funny I'll say it, it <laughs> it's unrealistic as hell and that's and so farcical and that's why it's funny and it's you know anyway it was it was good uh Kestrel says I definitely have seen every episode of the original Law and Order 2, Cable reruns. My old roommate and I watched that and Charmed episodes. I've seen some of Charmed. Uh, it wasn't... I was never, like, gripped by Charmed. I was never gripped by Charmed or Buffy. Um, I've always been, like, a crime TV. Like, I've seen every episode of Bones. I watched all of Bones. I've seen every episode up till the end. Like, I haven't seen the last season, but Criminal Minds... Um, cold case case files. Um, cold case, the one with Anthony uh, Paglia. That show was good, and I never like found it 
streaming anywhere where I could watch every episode. So I have seen a lot of Cold Case, but not every episode. Um, House. I've seen every episode of House. ER. I've seen... Now, because of recently, I've seen every episode of Grey's Anatomy. Except this season, because I don't have Hulu, and I'm not going to change my Disney Plus to, to Hulu. I'm not going to pay ten more dollars just to see a couple episodes. Uh, but yeah. Lindsay says, even knowing how unrealistic they are, I love procedural drama to just play in the background. Yes, exactly. Playing in the background is great. C- CSI, NCIS, Criminal Minds. Um, NCIS, I watched up until the season... Oh, I don't want to say because I don't want to spoil it. Um, it was a few years ago. But I had seen every episode up until a few years ago when when a certain character comes back that was supposed to have been dead. I'll just say that. And I watched like a couple of those first episodes of that season and then I stopped watching. And it was just kind of like, this is a little jumping the shark for me. Um, and it was after Abby left the show. Um, it was a little like, eh, not loving it. This is a little far-fetched for even, even me. Um, but I still want to go back and I don't know. And I, I hear things now. I don't know. Um, Kestrel says favorite show is Malcolm in the middle. I liked it. Okay. It wasn't, I'm not, I, I, I watched more like sitcoms when I was a kid, when I was younger, not even a kid, like teenage, uh, college, but, um, I don't know, like, as the older I've gotten, the more sitcoms are just kind of like, meh. Um, although, I, I want to say the last sitcom that I watched the whole thing was How I Met Your Mother, which had the worst last season. No, let me take that back. The worst last two episodes in, like, the fucking history of it, the history. The last season, the concept of it was great, that it was all one weekend that took place over the entire season. Um, but for reasons, the way it ended was frustrating. Um, I think that's like the last sitcom that I watched all of was How I Met Your Mother. Um, yes, I got sick of ER when they dropped the helicopter on the short man, one armed doctor. God, how fucking traumatizing that episode was for me. When anybody says anything about ER, that's the episode I think of. Ugh. Just went too far. I went to college with Noah Wiley's cousin, though. We joked about being related to celebs. That's cool. Um, I mean, I watched all of ER. Actually, I'm not sure I saw, like, some of the beginning of ER. Because I got into ER when it was still on air. And that was, like, me and my college roommate. Like, on Thursdays, we would watch it. Um, So I don't know if I saw all of ER or if I just saw, like, the last few seasons. Um, and then caught some reruns of the originals. Uh, uh, Daily Dysfunction says, when Grissom left is when I stopped CSI. I watched CSI, like, here and there, but I never, like, watched it on a regular basis. But, yeah, like, when an original character leaves the show, it's real hard to, like, keep. And, and... Honestly, like, when I was watching this last season of Grey's Anatomy, at this point, this show has been on for 20 years. And all of, there's only three original cast members left. And a lot of the main cast, even, you know, maybe even if they didn't start with the show, but they came on at some point and they were, like, on for a long time have left and there's been like kind of a rotating cast of people that have come on and then been on for a season or two and then left um but like this last season they brought in like new interns and they focused on the new interns and dr gray the titular you know character wasn't in all the episodes she was kind of stepping back behind the scenes um, and, like, she, at one point, like, 
the character moves cities and she's you still see her in the show here and there um but like the interns move into her house like it gets rented to the interns and i'm like okay this feels way more like a fresh reboot than a continuation of a series and i don't i don't know if i like it and i was thinking as i'm watching like the last season that was on netflix i'm like i don't think i'm gonna keep watching this show like when it comes back on um i think i might be done at this point and then the freaking season finale was so damn good and it got me so hooked that i was like okay no now i need to know what happens damn it they got me <laughs> how dare they uh, got me kind of invested again for all of them, my interest tends to drop off around season 10. After that, they just start getting a little too absurd. So I am interested in the new version of Criminal Minds. I haven't seen the new version of Criminal Minds, the one that's like only on CBS Plus or something. Um, but there was that final like seventh season that wasn't very long that I think was only like 10 episodes or something. And I haven't, I haven't seen that yet. Uh... At some point, I'll temporarily pay for the subscription to watch that. Yeah, that's basic, basically, yeah. Um, and I'm like, I, I don't want to pay for Hulu just to see the Grey's Anatomy stuff. I, I think I will figure out a different way to see it. Or actually, I should check to see if it's like on Netflix. So this is the best one so far. We got that angle, this angle, this gooey angle, and this angle. Because of the natural squish. Big glob, squish. That was the way to go. If only I'd known. Okay. We've got that one. We've got this one. Let me check that out this way. Oh, the problem is that this stuff. I thought doing it on the paper would be like, oh, it'll it'll just peel off. No, it 100% didn't. It is now stuck because there was a little spot on the page. So it is stuck in place where it is. This one has like where it, it was on here. Neither rim that, which I don't necessarily want to do. Or I have to just kind of cheat it to sit on here. Oh, there we go. That works. And then yeah, this is definitely the, the hero side of this one. Alright. So, kind of hold these and hope you can see my little setup. Like the cookies, I'm not going to like glue them to the tray. But yeah, the s'mores are done and they're cute. And there's some drips on the paper that is also cute. Let me just do it that way. So it's like, yeah. All right. The s'mores are. Let me try to get it. There we go. There's the s'more. Very cute. All right. We have been here for two hours, friends. We have talked movies and TV while crafting. It's been a good craft afternoon. I thank you all for coming. And we've got our uh, Rocky Road Sunday and our s'mores. It's been a very chocolate marshmallow kind of day in the mini-verse. There we go. Very chocolate marshmallow kind of day. Now I definitely want some chocolate marshmallow uh, concoctions myself. And I will leave you uh, with that hunger. And Kestrel, good to see you. Now I need to make a dessert to eat. Agreed. Uh,
thank you so much. Please like this video. It helps uh, get me closer to my goal of uh, being able to be a YouTuber. Hey. Uh, love chocolate marshmallows. Or she has chocolate marshmallows. I don't. But I can get some. All right. Thank you so much. Please like this video if you haven't already. Please subscribe. And I will see you guys. I don't... Oh, a little bit of housekeeping. I don't know that there will be a stream next weekend because next Sunday is Easter. Um, and while I don't necessarily celebrate, others do. Probably not sitting around watching me on YouTube. So, um, but I hope I will leave you... I will leave you with a preview of... I hope to have a Zencraft video um, edited and out... But I have to do it first. I designed my first um, laser cut thing, which is this sign. Very not many. Um, yeah, designed this this sign uh, with our, our our house number because the way our house number is right now, it's backlit by our porch light, and like delivery drivers can never fucking find it um, because they can't read. So. Yeah. So thanks. Not sure if there'll be a uh, stream next week, but look out for another video. And I'll catch you guys next time. Have a great rest of your crafternoon. Bye.